Good afternoon and uh, welcome to my daily chat. Coming down the home stretch now for the uh, milestone that I'm aiming for, I think on Wednesday. So today's episode is number 996, hence the milestone. And I'm actually using a quote from my graduate school. Um, it was a wonderful quote, which basically is the understanding that, and, and to quote what they said, is that healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. Hi Jenny, nice to see you. And um, that's really what I want to talk about because it's a tool. It's also what I use in my coaching because I'm not just a coach. <laughs> that's why I call it. That's why I say this is real support. So let me just teach it as a as a reminder to you that you can use it in your own life in different areas of life, um, particularly around areas that, that I would call matters of the heart. Um, it's been on my mind because I've been I've been talking with my buddy Katie. We're launching um, the Inspired Heart Mastery in a couple of weeks, and there's some pieces about it that I've been. I won't say massaging, but I've been pondering, and this is one of the things I want to talk about because it's what I do in my work. So, to, to again, the quote is, healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. And what that literally means, or I should say, figuratively, literally, it's a blend. What it really means, though, is that when you are dealing with emotional wounds, traumas, pains, upsets, hurt feelings, etc., 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 Figuring out the answers to, clue, to cure them, which is what I was trained as a kid to do because it was being English, it was in her DNA. We didn't feel things, we thought things. And this is the way I remember it. That never worked. But when I understood through my own journey, my own, my own healing, as well as all my own um, exploration of spiritual personal growth, it became very clear that holding space from a loving space and being a counseling, coaching, caring person for my clients was way more effective than giving, giving them the answers or helping to figure out the answers out. Coaching for a lot of people, just to, I'm just going to put a line, draw, draw a line in the sand, put a line in delineation. Um, for a lot of people out there who coach, they're much more trained in the, in the mindset, because coaching a lot of times is mindset. How to get from here to there, how to change things around. I used to have a, a brand, uh, a, a title I used to use called a gap closure specialist, because basically what I was helping my clients figure out was what was the gap between where they are now and where they want to be, and I'd help them get there, simple enough. But above all else, I should say underneath all of that, my desire was also to help my clients be more loving with themselves and therefore be more loving in their lives. And so by demonstrating that with my clients, by being a loving presence for my clients, that would change their lives. It wouldn't always be immediate though. <laughs> so the, I want to give you some, some keys you can use in your own life to do this because if you're like me, like most people, Certain things happen in our lives that knock us off center, and the last thing we're thinking about doing is being loving. So this is going to be a couple of clues and hints to give you some guidance. And if you want to go deeper, I have some suggestions, and I'm also going to give you an invitation to check out my um, one of my signature products, which is the Guided Self-Love Meditation, which is my voice guiding you in an AMP and meditation. Anyway, I'll tell you about that later on. So first of all, how do you use this yourself? So if you're like most of us, life happens sometimes. Not always the way you want, whether it's a relationship or business or traffic or money or family or any of those different things. Sometimes it happens that knock us off center. Literally, or you know, I keep saying literally and figuratively. I'll stop using that. It knocks us off center because we get caught up in the paradigm of being either feeling like we've been wronged or that we were right and they should have done something different. Or we feel guilt because we felt like we messed up or we feel resentment because we think they messed up or any number of things we feel. I should say, we judge ourselves with. And through that judgment, we eliminate the ability to love. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. We suppress the ability to love, that's more accurate. Because love doesn't get eliminated. And that was a mistake on my part saying it. But what I'm, what I'm understanding is, we just, we just forget it exists. We end up entering into this cycle, which is a mentally driven hamster wheel of judgment and blame and upset that keeps us out of our own loving. Now, there's this, there's an old um, statement saying about how you know that um, simple terms is that you can't be upset with something you don't care about. They've said many times. So in theory, if that's true, then when something happens that knocks you off center and you feel upset, bent out of shape hurt, blaming, whatever that is, you can't do that unless you have caring involved. I'm not sure how true that is. I've been, I've been, I've been contemplating that for a while now, so I'll leave that in your hands to consider for yourself. 
So to get back into the groove of this, your ability to move back to center, to come back to loving, is going to be will we indicate your ability to get over some of these issues. Well, not get over it, wrong way of saying it. To drop the issues. For some people, maybe not you, I know I did participate for a while in this, when I was wronged and feeling like I was hard done by by somebody, I was feeling like I want to blame them, there was a certain relish that I had with that. Great question. Thank you, Jenny. I'm glad it helped. Gave you something to think about. <laughs> but the thing is, when I got, when it, I was, I know that for some, some people, especially, I know friends of mine, well, less friends, more acquaintances, that got so invested in feeling that righteous indignation of being wronged and upset and having resentment, that they almost wanted to stay there because it was more, it was more like it gave them a sense of being, excuse me, gave them a sense of being, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's almost like feeling alive more because they were feeling upset. Because some people are wired that way. That being alive, being being um, upset was what gave them the, the attachment or the feeling they were being like, I'm alive now, I feel vindicated, like sort of thing, which is really backwards. Because frankly, for me, if you really understand what loving's about, you feel way more alive than you do if you're being in a place of blame, judgment, etc. So how do you get back to loving when you're in that place of upset? It's not quite so easy sometimes. So let me give some clues or some hints. When things happen, life happens. Sometimes things kind of let, come out of left field. Sometimes they come from a long distance away that are, um, what's one looking for? Slow burning. So you know what's going on pretty quickly before you can get there, but you don't get out of the way of them. I'm sure you've had this, I trust you've had this experience, I certainly have myself, where I saw a situation showing up and I could have removed myself from it, but I stayed way longer than I should have done and end up being upset and hurt, and hurt feelings from it. Why do we do this? Because I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one doing this. I know I'm not. But the recognition is, is the fact that there is a choice point. So one thing is when something happens that is, as I said, like a slow burn, where you can see it coming, you can choose to take care of yourself before it happens and step aside, so to speak, so you're not in the, in the path of that emotional upset. And I want to make something very clear, by the way. Moving back to loving and ignoring any emotional upsets is not a healthy choice either, because that simply is, ignoring is like suppressing, it's not effective. I'll tell you about that in a moment too. So then the other case where something comes out of left field, just knocks you sideways, um, a partner shows up and decides they, they want to want to break up with you, or some somebody, somebody crashes into your car, or something happens at work where you get fired, or, or somebody you trusted did something wrong. All these different things can be upset, stimulating experiences. Some, that's, not, that's not a fancy term, it's just what happens. So things when that sort of thing happens, the first thing is, is sometimes it's worth checking inside, is why am I getting upset? Now, it sounds like a silly question, getting upset because this thing happened. Well, that's the thing. If we get upset because some situation happened, we're actually playing a, another level of codependency. You may be wondering how that happens. The thing is, if we choose to stay in upset, then we're giving power over to what happened to us. Say it again. When we get upset about something and we stay in the upset, we're giving the power of that feeling over to what caused the upset in the first place. So if our ex does say something, did something to us that hurt our feelings, excuse me, our ex did something that we let them hurt our feelings. Let's be clear about this. Because we only we don't actually get our feelings hurt without our, our permission, commission, or omission. That sounded pretty good that did, didn't it? Yeah. When our feelings are hurt. It's because we let something happen to that for them to be hurt. Because truly, if we are really in autonomy and owning our space and in full loving with ourselves, our feelings don't get hurt that easily. It's only where we have chinks in the armor, so to speak. Actually, that's not a bad, it's not a good term because frankly, it's not about armor, it's about being free. When we recognize that we are in a place where we're being reactive to things that happen, we have an investment about how those things should be. And it's usually what goes on is that what triggers us is because we're invested in a situation being a certain way and when it gets moved to a different way, we get upset because it's like, that's not what we should be. It should be this way, not that way, whatever that thing is. I'm using some very vague metaphors, I know. But recognizing that loving is a key, recognizing that those things that happen don't have to take us totally off center. Now, it's okay to feel emotionally knocked over because that's a human experience. But staying there, when you know better, when you can do differently, and when you can love yourself, is really a poor choice. So when things happen in your life, it's not so much ignoring them, it's about understanding what's happening 
happening to you or happening around you, choosing to take care of yourself so you're not knocked over by it so much, and then also choosing any corrective action that you maybe you have a, a role to play to change things, because it's not like ignoring it either. It's also about being in a place where you can be consciously participating in resolution of what happened. So if someone, you know, smashing your car, yes, it can be like, damn, you know, upset feelings because somebody hurt your pride and joy. Well, yes, and what do you need to do to correct the situation? Maybe you need to get your insurance call, call an insurance company, get the car estimated, those sort of things. Take the action steps to resolve it. Now, if it's a hit and run, it can be really frustrating because there's no there's nobody to pin the blame on. Because that's one of the things we like to do as human beings. We like to be able to pin the blame on somebody. When someone hurts our feelings, that person is the culprit. We can blame them and feel righteous about it. That whole wiring, again, is codependent, as I said before. So I really want to make sure you get an understanding that when you really start to love yourself, and again, loving those parts inside that feel wounded, that feel upset, that feel blamed, feel judged, whatever, or the love, love those things, the parts inside, you start to become whole again. There's more to it than that, but that's the, that's the baseline. I'm giving you it's really sort of the... Um, the cliff notes version of this. Because so much of whatever we get, what happens in our upset feelings and the emotional dis discord is really codependently based. Sorry, co codependency based. Because we fall into that trap. Now, I'm not going to give you the whole smorgasbord because there's a lot going on with that. And I will be doing a, um, a podcast series starting next month with a friend of mine. We're going to do a collaborative series which can be short talks about codependency and we've got lots to talk about. But let me get back to the point I want to make here. When you really get clear that you can love yourself more than any wound, when you get clear that you can love yourself more than any hurt feeling, you can, when you get clear you can love yourself more than any other person can affect you, that's when freedom starts to happen. That's when healing really happens, and that's when you become autonomous and owning your space. But it starts with you choosing that. As I said at the beginning, a lot of my work with my clients is to actually hold that loving space for them so they can heal their own journey. I mean, it's not my job to heal them because that makes them codependent on me, not healthy. But I hold the loving space so they learn how to heal themselves and I hold the space and teach them how to love themselves so they can become whole again. That's where I actually kind of distilled my self-love guided meditation because I wanted to give my clients something they could take with them and use any time. So they never keep calling me for it. <laughs> and it's cheaper than calling me as well. But it's basically, it's a guided self-love meditation. It's got a workbook with a couple of really deep um, layers in it once you go through the book. And also has the AM, AM and PM guided meditations that only take five, six minutes each. But they'll set you up for the day and complete the day for you in a way that works. Self-love is, is key to this because when you love yourself first, healing happens. When you love yourself first, freedom happens. And when you love yourself first, the, 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 um, the hooks of codependency dissipate. You become less hooked into the past. So this is making some sense to you. This is this is a this is a this is actually a much more helpful teaching than I expected to do. When I was doing this talk today, I was just going to do something today because it's you know, coming in, countdown coming down to the end of the broadcast, data broadcast, which is on Wednesday. I was sitting with what I was going to talk about. This went deeper than I expected, so I guess they're going to be like that as they usually are. So um, again, link will be in the comments for my guided self love meditation. I, I invite you to check it out to actually order to get your own copy of it to use it yourself and to transform your life. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, where have you been? <laughs> this is my daily Facebook Live that I've do, done now for about three years, doing every day, seven days a week, on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Silver, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, which is why I'm doing it today. That'll be the plan for the next few days. Um, for Wednesday, I'm not sure if I'll do the weekly or what I'm going to do. I've got some other plans brewing, so I'll let you know as I get to that point. So tune in, watch them, enjoy my broadcasts. If you have any questions, message me on social media, uh, or by the way, replays. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do have an archive for them in two places. One of them is on my YouTube channel, excuse me, jumping ahead. One of them is on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page, and there's a whole list of them there, although only about two or 300 are visible because Facebook doesn't show them all, for whatever reason. There's a backup, which is on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash barryselby. Please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, where all the broadcasts up until Wednesday, last Wednesday, Thursday. Basically, I haven't been able to download my Facebook Live, so I can't put them up on YouTube for the last four or five days. But all before that, all 990 plus of them are on my business on uh, my YouTube channel. You can watch them there. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Um, you can search through by titles and find the ones that speak to you and, and watch them as you choose. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to me or put comments in the in, put notes in the comments below. 
The link will be in the comments in a moment. I'll put the link for the self-love meditation. I highly recommend you get that. It will help you transform your inner paradigm so you can be more supportive of yourself and be less um, hooked into other people's stuff. It's, power it's simple, but very powerful. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Please join me then. And as a reminder, and as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.